Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Pagbati po sa lahat ng aking mga kasamahan sa DA Bureau of Agricultural Research. Maging sila lahat po ng ating mga kabalikat, mga partners sa pagpapaunlad ng sektor ng agrikultura sa ating bansa. Lahat din po ng ating mga participants sa Cisco Webex, viewers po ng ating live stream sa FB, lalo't higit sa lahat sa atin pong masisipag ng mga mangingisda at magsasaka. Muli isa pong maulan ngunit magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Happy Farmers and Fisher Folks Month din po sa ating uh, mga kaibigang magsasaka at mangingisda. Ako po si Jello ng Knowledge Management and Information Systems Division ng DA Bar at uh, makakasama po ninyo ako sa higit sa isang oras na talakayan ng isang kapakipakinabang na usapan. Pero bago po tayo magsimula, magbibigay lamang po ako ng ilang mga paalala. Para po sa ating mga participants sa Cisco Webex, mangyari pong i-mute ang ating uh, microphone at i-off ang ating video. Paki-fill outan din po ang uh, evaluation form sa pamamagitan ng link na ipopost o makikita po ninyo mamaya bago po ang question and answer portion natin. Para naman po sa ating mga viewers ng ating live stream sa FB, paki-fill outan din po ang uh, form na makikita ninyo sa comment section. At syempre, para mas marami po ang maabot ng kaalaman at ng teknolohiya na tiyak na kapakipanginabang na atin pong pag-uusapan ngayong umaga, paki-share din po ang live stream na ito. So ngayong umaga po, uh, habang tayo po ay nagdiriwang ng uh, buwan ng, mags ng mga magsasaka at panginista, uh, tatalakayin po natin ang isang uh, exciting no, na uh, usapin. Isa sa, actually, itong commodity na ito ay isa sa mga favorite na almusal no, ng mga Pilipino. Kaya tiyak po ako na makakarelate po tayo kaya tayo ay consumer or kaya tayo po ay uh, manginista. So moving on, allow me to introduce our resource speaker for this morning for the seminar titled Enhancing the Value of the Philippine Sardines in the Market. Our resource uh, speaker for today is a post-harvest fisheries expert and a licensed fisheries professional and is currently the Dean and Professor of Fisheries Science of the College of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences of the University of the Philippines, Visayas, and uh, the former Lee, or the former Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs of the same university. Her fields of specialization include fisheries quality management, food quality and safety, and uh, post-harvest fisheries handling and processing. She has numerous publications in IS I indexed international journals, local journals, and conference proceedings. She obtained her best, uh, Bachelor of Science in Fisheries as magna cum laude from the University of the Philippines and her MS in Food Science from Cornell University in US of A. She pursued her doctorate studies in Murdoch University, Western Australia. She is presently, or she presently sits as the member of uh, the National Panel of Technical Experts of the Philippine Climate Change Commission, a member of the Technical Panel for the Fisheries Education of the Commission on Higher Education, member of the Philippine Codex Commission's Subcommittee on Fisheries and Fishery Products, Executive Director of the Philippine Fisheries Institution Network, post-harvest fisheries expert in technical expert tools of the Bureau of Agricultural research of the Department of Agriculture and the Philippine Council for Agriculture and Aquatic Resources Research and Development, Department uh, of Science and Technology. Tayo po ay mapalad ngayong umaga na tayo po ay matututo kay uh, Dr. Encarnacion Emilia S. Yeah. Good morning po, Dr. Mimi. Hello, good, good morning, good morning everyone. Can I share now my slide? Yes, po, ma'am. Sure, po. Okay. Yan. Okay na? Okay siya? Yes, po, ma'am. Okay. Uh, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Umpisahan na po natin ang ating pag-uusap ngayong umaga. And the title of my presentation is Enhancing the Value of Philippine Sardines in the Market. Uh, I am Encarnacion Emilia S. Yap or Mimi, and then uh, to, with me, uh, who worked on this research on uh, sardines, 
uh, is the research team, UP Sardin team. Uh, kasama ko po dito si Harold Monteclaro, Le Peralta, Rubina Pata, Tabi Pamatid, and Ariel Sefil. So, umpisaan po natin. Okay. Okay. Uh, in any, sa lahat po ng mga ginagawa natin sa kasalukuyan, sa, sa, sa industriya ng pangisdaan at uh, industriya ng pangisdaan, meron po tayong tinatawag ng motivators. Ito po yung mga plano at mga uh, goals or development goals na tinitignan natin para ma-direct kung ano yung gagawin natin para sa industriya. Kasama na po dito ang Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, the 17 of them, the Philippine Fisheries Code or RA 8550 as amended by RA 10654, we also have our Ambition 2020 as the Philippine Development uh, Plan, as part of the Philippine Development Plan. And of course, our Comprehensive National Fisheries Industry Development Plan and specifically po sa post-harvest fisheries, the Comprehensive Post-Harvest Marketing and Ancillary Development Plan. Lahat pong ito ay uh, yun hong RA8550, the CNFIDP at yung uh, C CPH my uh, yung pong CNFIDP na review po siya at lumabas yung new version niya na midter midterm version medium term version ng 2021 kasalukuyan po nating nire-review at nire-revise yung RA8550 at uh, natapos na po yung review and to be released na po yung bago uh, version ng uh, Comprehensive Post-Harvest Marketing and Ancillary Industry Plans. Ito pong mga plano na to ay base uh, ay ito po yung pinagbabasihan ng ating mga mga, uh, mga plano para sa industriya. At ito po lahat ng to, if you are to focus or zero in to Philippine fisheries, uh, nakafocus po ito sa vision for Philippine fisheries industry, which is a sustainable and competitive fishery industry with the goals to have sufficient contribution to national security, inclusive, inclusive growth within the industry, sustainable fish science-based fisheries and aquatic resources management practices, compliance to international laws, policies, and standards, strengthened capabilities in infrastructure technologies human resources and information sharing, and of course, the resilience to environmental hazards. Now, in our study po, uh, funded by the Bureau of Agricultural Research, we used a value chain approach to look at the Philippine sardine industry. Value chain approach po, kung identify natin, it's a cost-effective value addition system in which the value is added in the form of savings of time, and money spent on the different nodes of the value chain. As you could see in this particular slide, po, we have the value chain and we have the value chain map of the Philippine sardines as what we uh, not uh, we, what we have reported in our research. Uh, kung saan nakikita dito ang networking or ang ugnayan ng bawat isang node or isang sector sa buong industriya ng sardinas. At ang Philippine sardines po natin, uh, nakatutok po tayo sa tap, apat na species na pinakalaganap. Although there are several species po ng sardines sa Pilipinas, ito po yung pinakalaganap na, ginag, na kinukonsumo sa Pilipinas. Uh, Sardinella limuru, gibosa, kimbriata, and amblis gaster serum. Yan po. Now, ano po yung ginawa namin? We, have, we went to different places in the countries. Uh, we, 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 we conducted face-to-face -face survey, focus group discussions, and field observations uh, from uh, Pangasinan, uh, Quezon, Laguna, Metro Manila, Palawan, Sorsogon, Masbate, Capiz, Iliilo, Negros Orient Occidental, Cebu, Misamis Oriental, Lipolog, and Zamboanga. Kung sa umikot po ito ng buong Pilipinas to see 
the interrelationship po ng mga key players of the value chain of sardines. And uh, kung titiyan po natin sa, sa value chain, <clears throat> mag-uumpisa po tayo sa production, uh, uh, ang buong Philippine fisheries production po uh, medyo nagpa-plateau siya. At uh, kung titignan natin yung, yung, yung production figures ng 2021, you would notice that umabot na po tayo sa 4.2 4.2 yeah, million metric tons. At kung titignan po natin itong figure na to, pinakmatas na po ang production ng aquaculture. Uh, na over, uh, na exceed na po ng aquaculture ang production ng both municipal and commercial fisheries. Kung titignan po natin ang sardines, ito pong, uh, titignan po natin ang sardines, nanggagaling po ito sa both commercial and municipal fisheries. fisheries. Ito po siya. Kung titignan po natin, uh, the two most important commercially uh, uh, commercially important species of sardines, yung pong Bali sardines, which is basically our uh, sardinella lemuru, at ang fimbriated sardines, which is our uh, sardinella fimbriata. Medyo po pumababa ang uh, production ng fimbriated sardines, but umakyat po yung uh, production ng Uh, sardines in other in, in in general in the country. Uh, we have contribution of sardines uh, to Philippine fisheries industry and the contribution also of sardines to Philippine food industry as shown in the list. Because of the significant contribution of the industry to uh, the fishery sector and the Philippine society in general, there is really a need for us to valorize. Valorize means enhancing the value. Of Philippine sardines. It could be done through looking at the different nodes of the value chain and see kung saan po natin may enhance ang value ng ating sardines. Out of this study po, we got this process and product flow along the value chain map of sardines in the Philippines. So we have sources of sardines uh, from the musical fishers and commercial fishers. Pumupunta po ito sa pre- Uh, pre trading uh, pre trading uh, primary trading sector kung saan po meron tayong uh, consolidators and uh, wholesalers uh, in different uh, trading facilities okay kasama na po dito yung mga fish uh, yung mga regional ports uh, municipal fish ports Uh, CF, CFLCs or uh, community fish planting based uh, areas and of course centers at, and of course the traditional uh, landing areas. Yung traditional po would refer to those uh, coastal areas kung saan uh, dumadaong or nagdadock yung ating mga municipal fishers. Uh, moving forward to the, to the next uh, node of the chain, As you could see, ito na po yung processing. Kung saan, meron tayong different processed products. And I think most of us are familiar with these products. And that would include smoked sardines, dried sardines, fermented sardines, salted sardines, which could be uh, sold as either salted or fermented. And of course, bottled or canned sardines and the fresh frozen sardines. Followed by the distribution channel, dun po sa, sa flow, kung saan meron tayong mga distributors, wholesalers, and retailers bago po ito dumating sa mga consumers. Interestingly, in all of these steps, in the all of these nodes in the value chain, what we could see are actually losses and waste along the value chain. Ito po yung mga na, nawawala or na yeah, yung nawawala or natatapon sa different uh, part ng, ng, ng supply chain. Uh, losses, by the way po, could either be physical losses, nutritional losses, or uh, market value losses. Kaya po kailangan natin yung value chain analysis. Tingnan po natin para mabawasan yung losses sa market value ng ating sardinas. Uh, kung zero po in po natin, for example, meron po ako dito isang table that would show us yung information from medium to small scale sardine processors 
in Dipolog City at as you could see in here po kung gumagawa po yung mga taga Dipolog ng uh, bottled sardines yung ika fourth column would tell us kung gaano kadami yung waste na produce nila per day ito pong waste na to yun po yung mga ulo at yung mga buntot na tinatanggal once we uh, process the sardines in, into uh, bottled sardines. At kung titignan po natin, malaki po ang nawawala. Ang nangyayari po dito, uh, in particular, may mga practices po tayo na either binabaon, binabaon sa lupa yung mga waste or yung iba tinatapon na lang sa dagat. Which is sa ating problem ay hindi dapat kasi nakakasira po ito ng uh, ecosystem or yung yung tinatawag nating yung yung ating water quality pag tinapon na ito sa dagat. Kaya kailangan pong gumawa tayo ng paraan para ma uh, magkaroon ng mga oportunidad ang ating mga uh, processors or ating mga fishers kung paano matatransform itong waste na to into something that could be valid, that could ano, uh, generate income especially sa mga coastal communities. Now Doon po sa aming pag-aaral, pag sa aming project, we identified the different strengths and opportunities ng value, ng, ng different uh, nodes ng value chain. Kasama na po dito yung popularity ng traditional sardine products among the consumers. Meron na po tayong institutional markets that have specific target distribution channels. Meron po tayong industry association of sardines producers. and processors, pero din po tayo different methodologies available. Meron po tayong large scanning facilities, especially sa Mindanao area. Meron na rin po tayong private, public or government and private fish ports and other trading facilities. Meron po tayo ang, ang uh, nag, nagpapatakbo po ng no, sardine industry sa Pilipinas ay yung tinatawag natin National Sardine Management Plan. which is actually uh, uh, supported by a strong Sardine Producers Association. Kung meron po tayong strengths and opportunities, meron din po tayong tinatawag na challenges and bottlenecks. Ito, this would include yung ating limited access to an array of Sardine products due to limited value-added Sardine products available in the market. We have non-competitive Sardine products. Unfortunately, a lot of us only target existing traditional markets for our products. We also have non-standardized processes, especially in different coastal communities on how they dry the sardines or how they smoke the sardines. We also have limited facilities for large-scale production and we incur losses due to non-utilization of processing waste. Losses will also be due to the unavailability of ice plant or cold storage facilities in some areas of the country. Meron din po tayong uh, reported fluctuation in terms of the prices of sardines all over the country. Meron din pong non-observance ng good manufacturing practices. It's at some point po, especially during the peak season, we have high volume. Therefore, merong low value ng sardines. And then, and because of that, merong low income ang small fishers. And then, meron din po tayong site-specific implementation of closed season policy, competition in the fishing grounds, and limited access to formal lending institution for the purchase of inputs. So, yun po yung mga challenges and bottlenecks. And because of these challenges and bottlenecks, which came up with this intervention framework for the Philippine sardine industry. This could include three main intervention framework, uh, intervention measures, and that would include recommended policy guidelines, improved existing technologies or generation of new ones, and the intensification or focusing or directing capability building mechanisms. Each of this uh, intervention framework have expected outcomes as shown in the slide, as you could see in here. And these are all moving towards a goal 
which is improved performance of the Philippine fisheries industry. Now, I would like to zero in po to the intervention framework on the improvement of existing technologies and generation of new ones. This would actually lead to expected outcomes, which would include enhanced quality and safety of surgeon products, reduction or reduced losses and waste along the sardine value chain, better market driven strategies for sardine products, increased engagement of fishers to other entrepreneurial activities, increased adaptive capacities of players during disasters, and better climate resilient technologies. Ito po yung sa tingin natin na ang mga kinakailangan to valorize or to enhance the value of of sardines in the market so that it would be able it would be able to increase the competitiveness of sardines thereby increasing its performance in the market how do we enhance for the value of philippine sardines we need to maximize the value of sardines through maximization of sardines as a food resource through better cold storage facilities better processing methodologies, better packaging and labeling, and other related activities. We also have to maximize sardines as a material resource, meaning to say, in addition to pagiging direct food for human, okay, meron po tayo mga non-food uh, uh, products that we can get from sardines. And that could either be in the form of fertilizer, fish oil, animal feeds, and some biomolecules or yun yung natin, bioactive molecules or substances. We could also make use of sardines in maximization of, uh, of energy resource uh, through anaerobic digestion that, is, that could be the source of some biogas and fertilizer. Okay. Now, the need to maximize the value of sardines, Philippine sardines could start po uh, in the primary trading areas. Yung mga trading areas po natin that would include uh, traditional landing sites, municipal fish ports, community fish landing centers, wet markets, and our regional fish ports. Uh, it could also be, uh, this could be done through our investment in appropriate cold chain facilities. I would say, I would like to emphasize the word appropriate kasi po, there could be some places wherein yung cold chain facilities na naiisip natin may not be appropriate to the area. Titignan po natin kung tama ba yung, yung area na pinaglalagyan natin ng mga cold chain facilities. Pwede rin po tayo mag-introduce ng, mag ng other, uh, I should say other uh, infrastructure in other areas. Uh, in, in ulit ulit po yung pagkakaroon sana ng common service facilities uh, coupled with a uh, cold hub in some strategic areas in the different countries. Uh, we encourage especially po na uh, meron tayong mga uh, fisheries management areas all over the country. If it would be better for us to come up with one strategically located common service facilities uh, and code hub in one in each of the FMAs or fish management areas and these are actually connected to the different uh, fish ports in that particular FMA and this could actually be you know uh, uh, be the source of quality sardines so sinay po natin quality sardines ito po yung uh, nagpa-follow sana tayo ng good manufacturing practices in these particular areas. Kailangan din po yung good manufacturing practices on board fishing vessels, landing landing facilities, processing plants, and during storage and distribution. Uh, kailangan po natin to para mapanatili ang, na matagal ang shelf life ng, ng sardinas para ma-maximize ang value ng sardinas. Kailangan din po itong mga facilities na to at yung mga practices so that we could reduce post-harvest losses and waste in those trading facilities. Now, in processing facilities po, we could do in addition to our processing or our uh, normal uh, 
our, our normal processing methodologies such as smoking, drying, or yung, yung pong mga processing methodologies that are able to come up with different commodity, different process products like, like smoked sardines, yung tinapa, uh, dried sardines, uh, bottled canned sardines, fermented sardines. Uh, we could zero in po in the maximization of the value or enhancing the value of sardines via transformation ng mga waste coming from these processing facilities into food and non-food products. We, we, we came up with this practical guidebook on utilization of sardine processing byproducts and waste in the Philippines. This project that we had has been funded by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. It's out now po, as, uh, you know, a practical guidebook, which is actually aimed to uh, to guide our our partners, our 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 yeah, our partners, our key players in the coastal communities. Kung paano magkakat ma transform on how to transform our waste, the waste in uh, sardine processing into something that could either be at uh, in that could either be food or non-food. Okay, in this particular uh, practical guidebook, po, we zero in to the production of fish silage as a one non-food product that could be used either as fertilizer or as uh, animal feed. Also, we could apply uh, biotechnological advances in, uh, in, in the transformation of processing waste or we could transform uh, some of this yeah, uh, some of this waste and uh, uh, byproducts of Philippine sardine processing plants into something that is uh, you know uh, that is uh, of that is of use for example po example po nito yung mga <clears throat> mga products po para ma-avoid yung environmental problems at ma-keep yung soil sustainability, matatransform yung po natin to into different products. In fact, hindi lang po yung mga processing waste and byproducts or bycatch, including na po yung any fishery resources that we could think of that we could be, you know, you could be utilizing as a rich source of metabolites, antibiotics, probiotics, bioemulsifiers, polyunsaturated fatty acids, yung pong tinatawag natin omega-3 fatty acids, toxins, polyphenolic compounds, and other high-value bioactive compounds. Meron po, we have different structural and functional characteristics and marked biological activities of bioactives that we could zero in. Pwede po tayong mag-extract uh, ng mga peptides from any of these resources and these peptides but impossible antihypertensive, antithrombotic, antibiotic, or antioxidative properties. We could also extract fish protein hydrolysates with high levels of essential amino acids and peptides that can be used in feed or it could be used in other fishery products for enhancement of their functionality. Pwede rin po magkaroon ng mga antimicrobial peptides and there could also be extraction of enzymes from the viscera, okay, uh, and also some probiotics. This sort, this uh, fishery resources could be, uh, could have different food and non-food applications. They could serve as either food additives, functional ingredients, feed additives, food allergens. We, they also could have pharmaceutical applications, nutraceutical applications, aquaculture applications, and there are fishery applications that would include some of the markers or biomarkers on climate resist, resilience, species identification, improvement of practices, and biomonitoring. So marami po tayong makukuhang different uh, bioactive substances and different yeah different bioactive substances that have different food and non-food applications in addition to all those things po we could also maximize the value of philippine sardines as a food and in terms of marketing po 
we have to do better positioning of our products in the market through better packaging and labeling. Example po namin dito, we've developed product and packaged them uh, uh, and introduced them to the fisher folk of Masidman Island. Asidman is an island in the, uh, the municipality of Ahoy in Iliilo, wherein we introduced to them uh, the, the production of sardine, of Spanish sardine, yung dried sardines po na nilagyan ng oil at nilagyan sa bottle. We also have our uh, hamonado sardines. We also have our smoked hamonado sardine and the smoked sardines. Why would we think of this maximizing the value and increasing the, the market and, and you know positioning these uh, sardines in the market? Based on the different studies lately, it would appear that uh, the sardines is usually nagnagamit sa drying of sardines, which is fimbriated, or sardinella gibosa and sardinella fimbriata. Uh, in northern Iloilo po, it would appear that in the, the past several years, abumababa po ang production. What is increasing now is the production of sardinella lemuru. The sardinella lemuru is the oily sardines. And hindi po ginagamit ng ating mga farm fishers at ating mga processors yung oily sardines sa pag-produce nila ng dried fish or dried sardines. Northern Iloilo is a good source of dried sardines that is distributed all over the country. Ang ating pong uh, warehouse for dried sardines, in particular in Manila, we found out in our study is in Tondo. So lahat po ng mga nagda-dry coming from Cavite, Sorsogon, uh, Masbate, uh, Iloilo, Capiz, Cebu, ang ang bagsakan po natin ng, ng dry sardines is in Tondo, in Manila. And then doon na po kumukuha ng mga dry sardines na binebenta in different parts of Luzon. Now, ang problema po, nahihirapang mag-dry at mahirap po talaga technologically wise na mag-dry ng sardines if ang ginamit is oily sardines or yung sardinella limuru. At dahil po sa pagtaas ng ng, ng ng production ng saltinella rimuru, especially in northern Iloilo part, it is important to introduce to the fishers, especially in coastal communities, how to process these uh, oily sardines into different products, such as bottled sardines and different, you know, hamunado sardines and smoked sardines. Na pwedeng mag-maximize ng value niya, hindi na lang siya gawing dried sardines, but rather different sardines na pwedeng i-introduce sa market. Okay, now, uh, isa po sa gusto kong i-share sa inyo ngayon is the need for us to future-proof Philippine sardines. How do we enhance the value of Philippine sardines in the future? Alam po natin that climate change is real and we have to have our way of reducing exposures and vulnerabilities to this climate change issues. Exposure po is the degree by which the location, attributes, and value of assets that are important to communities could be affected by a hazard. And vulnerability refers to the likelihood that assets will be damaged or destroyed or affected when exposed to hazard. Isa po sa magandang gawin para at, at simple and practical and madaling isipin na gawin para sa ating sardine products ay ang pagtingin ng pagbababa ng losses sa sa ating sa ating when we uh, when we handle when we handle our sardine products or our sardine uh, as raw material in general po uh, food losses and waste contributes to approximately 8% of the total man-made greenhouse gas emissions meaning to say if we let our sardines spoil it will produce methane gas, which contributes to the greenhouse gas in our surrounding. Methane gas po is known as to be 25% more global warming potential than carbon dioxide. Unfortunately po, even if uh, 
sardine has low carbon dioxide footprint, GHG or gas house gas, greenhouse gas associated uh, during the value chain of sardine is actually increasing. In one GHG or greenhouse gas uh, associated with specific product forms tend to increase along the value chain. Specific po ito dun sa mga areas where we handle the, the sardines not in a good way, kaya nagkukudusya ng methyl gas, meth, methane gas. So kailangan po natin i-handle properly through appropriate post-harvest facilities. And at the same time, ito po yung pinaka-practical na pwede natin gawin, wherein, okay, we would like to introduce facilities and technologies, yung tinatawag natin climate smart post-harvest technologies, wherein yung, ito po yung normal na ginagawa sa mga coastal areas sa pagda-dry ng sardinas. Pwede po natin gamitin yung mga uh, dryer na, na ini-introduce ng BOST and some uh, uh, state universities and colleges at pwede rin po itong mga uh, yung pwede gumawa tayo ng mga ganitong infrastructure as shown here wherein we could introduce them in coastal communities para dun tayo mag-dry so in terms po ng, uh, ng uh, climate change issues sa bawa la niña pwedeng 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 ano uh, pwede na rin po kung pagtaguan to or pwedeng mag-dry tayo ng ating mga sardines doon sa ating mga climate smart post harvest technologies now lastly po i think this is the last slide that i have we have to gear up philippine sardines against impending trade restrictions there is one that is coming and I think a lot of people now should be aware of this. And I've tried to talk to BFAR only last week about this. Yung tinatawag natin, uh, we have to future proof our sardine industry at, at iba pang, ano, at iba pang, uh, iba pang commodity. In fact, hindi lang po yung fisheries, all food commodities all over the country. In the United States po, they will have the full implementation in January 2026. The Food Safety Modernization Act, Rule 204, wherein also all, all exporters of food products to the U.S. must be uh, providing proof of traceability. Ngayon po, ginagawa na nung iba to, pero kailangan po ito, yung traceability po natin, uh, kinakailangan meron tayong mga documentations na matitrace from the source of raw material up to the uh, distribution channel. Yun po, bag, babasok sa loob ng US, kailangan pong lahat documented to. Meaning to say din po, i-anchor din po natin ito dun sa IUUF, yung illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing, wherein kailangan pong ma-retain ma or ma-maintain yung sustainability ng resource, uh, kailangan ipakita yung documentation, mga catch documentation certificates, wherein uh, that would show na meron tayong, ito lang na violate to sa IUUF. And then sa bawat isang uh, node, to sa value chain, kailangan po tayong may trace, may mga evidence that would show na natitrace yung ating product without those our product, whether it's fish, sardines, or fish, or any food product going to the market in the United, going to the market specifically in the United States, makaka problem drama po tayo by January 2026. So, ito po yung ano na warning, a sort of warning to everybody that we have to gear up our Philippine sardine industry against this impending trade restriction. Meron po tayo ngayong binubuno na trade restrictions sa US at yun yung Marine Mammal Protection Act that uh, hindi po masyadong marami yung nakasulat na sardine species but meron din pong sardine species na nagbibilong din sa list of, uh, for, of uh, yeah, foreign fisheries in the US wherein hindi nila allow yung mga uh, commodities, specifically fisheries commodities na nahuhuli ng gears na nakaka huli rin ng mga marine mammals. 
ano na ho yan, supposedly ang full implementation noon was January 2021, pero hindi pa po sila tapos sa pag-evaluate ng different countries. The Philippines has, you know, has a list, a long list of, uh, of species, a long list of different species with different fishing years in different fishing grounds na kailangan i-prove sa, uh, sa U.S. government na walang marine mammals na nahuhuli. Uh, ngayon po is it's still ano yung uh, it's still not fully implemented because nahihirapan silang mag uh, mag mag mag, uh, mag evaluate ng different uh, commodities, different fisher commodities all over the all over the world. Uh, so pero supposedly po full implementation na yon. Uh, and we just have to make sure that in January 2026, yun know, ating uh, traceability system is in place in the country. So yun po yung mga pwede natin gawin sa ating industry, sa ating sardinas. We are navigating the blue weights towards sustainability, efficiency, and aquaculture in the Philippines. And we could do this through the enhancement of the value of one of the most commercially important fish fishes in the Philippines, which is our sardines. Uh, fisheries. Maraming salamat po at kung meron po kayong tanong uh, I'm willing to answer them. Yan, maraming maraming salamat po Dr. Mimi pa, sa pagbabahagi po ng inyong uh, ng maraming kaalaman ano, at especially din po sa passion po ninyo sa ganitong uh, field because this is your field of uh, expertise. For sure po ay uh, nahikayat natin ano yung mga kaibigan po natin mangingis dahil particular na ikonsidera na maliban sa hulihin okay pa, uh, manghuli ng ganitong uri ng isda eh marami pa lang pwedeng pasukin na na maraming pwedeng gawing produkto para maliban sa mapataas yung uh, value ng uh, sardinas eh syempre para ma-augment natin yung kita ng ating mga minamahal na mangingis isda so for sure po ay uh, Marami pong natutunan yung ating pong mga viewers. So, meron po tayong mga katanungan, ma'am. Okay. Yan po. So, I'll go. Yan na po. Hold on. Ayan. To start off po, ay may tanong po tayo. Ano daw po ba yung uh, bentahe? Bagay patok na patok na bentahe ng uh, pagpoproseso ng sardinas o ng ganitong uri ng isda kumpara doon sa mga typical na naipoproseso na po ng ating mga ordinaryong maayinis na ma'am. Ano pa yung patok na patok? Okay. <laughs> Depend... Sabi, eh, parang ano eh. Yeah, yeah. Parang yun, yun talaga yung kinaano ma'am eh, na uh, benta uh, or advantage. Yeah. Yung, yung product kasi, fishery products in general, are actually uh, culture, culturally sensitive. Meaning to say, may mga areas na mataas ang benta, for example, ng smoked sardine. Merong areas na mahindi. Ah, it's a matter of marketing. What we could do is, you know, kung hindi ma mabenta sa isang lugar, we could, you know, test the market and introduce them. Alimbawa po natin, alimbawa, ayun nga, yung, yung smoked sardines. Pwede rin po yung, yung sinabi ko kanina, yung harmona, hamonadong sardinas, pwede, ano yun, pwede i-produce yun no, sa isang area. Kumbaga, tignan po natin kung saan siya... Uh, tapatok kung saan siya pwedeng ma-accept ng consumers different, from in different count in different parts of the country pero sa ngayon po isa sa mga kumbaga isa sa mga ang tawag natin diyan emergency disaster food product na available na talaga namang gina, kinakain ng lahat ng tao sa Pilipinas yung uh, battle uh, no no as uh, cancer deaths yun yung talaga pero po Uh, mahirap po kasi mag-cancer din simply because yung mahirap siyang kailangan kang bumili ng uh, ano, concealer. So kung gusto nyo, mas, mas, marami na pong nagpo-produce nagpo nito, bottled sardines. Mas madali po siya. Kaya lang po, uh, uh, word of caution sa mga mag, mag, uh, ano, sa mag bottled sardines, pwede po tayong mag recycle ng bottle pero hindi po tayo pwedeng mag-recycle ng bottle cup. Kasi po, once ginamit yung bottle cup, minsan, 
hindi na po siya pwedeng gamitin kasi po meron yung meron yung uh, plasticizer sa gilid sa, sa loob ng cup na pag nagamit na once hindi na po siya pwedeng gamitin sa susunod na pagproseso yung pong plasticizer na yon once kasi na nandoon may hirapang siya yung nagsasara ng husto sa, sa, sa battle so pag nasira yon hindi na pwede uling gamitin kaya kailangan hindi pwede eh hindi pwede i-recycle yung bata yung cup yung ano ayan thank you ma'am so parang ano no uh, siguro isa sa bentahe talaga eh marami nga marami nga uh, pwedeng produkto na gawin out of uh, processing this type of uh, fish yung uh, sunod po nating tanong ma'am eh kanina you made mention of uh, places po kung saan na uh, possibly bountiful yung harvest or yung source ng ganitong uri ng is that ang tanong ko dito ma'am ay para doon sa kumbaga hindi pa ganoon ka aware no ano daw pong buwan in particular or mga kondisyon ng panahon maybe or other conditions yung kailangan i-consider para sa magagandang harvest ng ganitong uri na isda and maybe we can also uh, mention kung saan mga lugar pa kaya maliban po sa na-mention yung kanina yung maganda yung source ng ganitong uri ng okay. isda ma'am okay uh, may mga areas tayo na halimbawa uh, take the case of Visayan Sea ang Visayan Sea po kasama ang uh, Yeah, Visayan Sea and Northern Palawan. Maganda ang huli ng ng sardinas mga bandang March, April, May, June. Kasi tapos po pagdating ng November, November specifically November 15 up to February 15, kasama po ang sardines do sa kinatawag nating closed season policy. Kasi po do sa closed season policy do sa area na to, Northern Palawan and Visayan Sea. Ah uh, Doon po yung opportunity for the sardines to spawn. Kaya sinoclose yung yung sinoclose yung area para huwag mangisda yung mga tao, huwag kumuli ng sardinas para sa sustainability niya. Ganun din po, ganun mga ganun din panahon November until March ang close season sa ng sardinas sa Dipolog area, do sa Misambuanga area. So beyond those times doon po maraming huli. Uh, in other areas ganun din po. Uh, to give you one specific example which is quite interesting. Pag ho nag uh, dumami yung huli sa ng ng glut season, ang dami-daming huli sa Sorsogon in particular. Maabot lang po ng 10 to 15 pesos per kilo ang sardinas sa Sorsogon. Ang ginagawa po nito, it's an opportunity for those processors from Lingayen, Pangasinan, na kumuha ng mga sardinas at dalhin by a truck papuntang Lingayen para doon i-process into fermented products. So hindi na kaya kasi ng sorsogon na ibenta siya as fresh. Tapos super bagsak yung presyo kaya binebenta na lang para sa sa ano sa para sa para gawing fermented or bagoong at ya yeah, bagoong saka patis doon sa Lingayen. Ngayon in other areas of the country pag uh, yun nga, during the months of March uh, April May doon karamihan kasi ito yung after the close season dito dumadami yung huli. Ngayon, in terms ng product, syempre po, marami yung produkto na nag-dry during those seasons. Kaya pagdating ngayon ng tagulan, marami na ngayon ang dried fish. Doon sa mga trading areas for dried fish or trading warehouses ng dried fish. Specifically sa, sa Luzon po, naka-focus naka tayo or naka-sentro naka yung uh, yung supply ng dried fish sa Tondo area. So doon na doon doon na nila binebenta lahat. In fact, meron nga ako kaming na, na nakausap, even yung mga tao sa Capiz dito sa Panay Island, pag marami yung huli nila, merong kumukuha ng sardinas, pinapadala pa sa pagdasinan for the ano, for the uh, manufacturing of fermented. Ah uh, kaya po in-introduce namin sa 
Panay in particular, especially sa Northern Iloilo, na pag ganun yung nangyari doon sa isang lugar na maraming huli, pwede nilang i-transform into fermented products. Okay, into fermented products. So, in fermented po, pwede siyang gawing bagoong and uh, uh, bagoong at uh, patis. Meron po kaming kwento dito, yun pong product, yun pong, ano, uh, itong, itong, itong uh, research natin from the ABAR. At tinulungan po natin before the pandemic yung mga ating fa farmer, fishers sa Nasidman Island. So, na iyo, gumawa kami ng mga, meron po kaming fermentation bats na binigay sa kanila, gumawa ng fermented sardines. Iniwanan po namin uh, hope, uh, hoping that after six months, babalik kami doon, papakita namin kung ano, kitna namin kung ano na yung nangyari sa sardina, doon sa, sa ayan, fermented sardines, doon sa area. Eh, nagkaroon po ng pandemia, so naiwan. Pero ang ginawa namin, uh, in our monitoring, we tried to talk to these people to see kung ano na yung nangyari doon sa, doon sa, sa, doon sa, ano, doon sa fermented Nung binuksan po nila yung, yung mga containers, nasarapan sila sa amoy, and during the pandemic, ginamit po nila yung produkto. Yun po mga nasa coastal communities, ginamit nila yung produkto natin. At nakatulong din naman sa kanilang pang-araw-araw na uh, pangailangan sa pagkain. In addition to, you know, dried uh, fish and other, and other yung mga gulay-gulay dun sa, sa isla, nagamit po nila yung ating dried product. So, example lang po yun uh, na, na magandang paggamitan ng dried, o oh, ng ano, ng ating uh, sardinas. Well, thank you po, Dr. Nini. Um, marami po tayong tanong dito, no? So, um, uh, na-engage po natin yung ating mga tagapakinig, no? Uh, another question, ma'am, eh, kanina you made mention of uh, parang mga maling uh, drying practices po doon sa mga, especially in coastal communities. Kasi di ba parang, syempre yun sa ating mga turista, eh, kadalasan pag sila'y nabibisita sa mga magagandang karagatan o dagat dito sa Pilipinas, doon sila kadalasan nakakabili. Ma'am, pwede niyo po bang uh, i-expound pa? Or pwede ba nating bigyan ng idea yung ating mga manginisla in particular? Ano kaya yung mga uh, maling practices sa pagpapatuyo ng isla? At paano kaya ito itatama? Ma At sige. Okay, yung mga maling practices kasi, umpisa na natin halimbawa dun sa paglalagay ng sardinas. Pag, well, may practices kasi na ganito. Pag fresh na fresh siya, pag fresh na fresh siya, automatic yun, dinadry ka agad nila without necessarily salting them. Ito yung pag lumabas siya, talagang ano siya, uh, less yung salt ng sardines. Pag, pag masyadong hu, marami yung huli, ang ginagawa ng mga nandos sa coastal communities, nilalagyan nila ng asin para hindi masira. Tapos the following day or the, the next uh, two days, saka pa lang nila dinadry. At makikita ang pagkakaiba ng, ng isda, ng dried fish, kung sinolt siya or hindi. Pag merong medyo mga parang salty, yung mga white na parang chalk, na buha-buhangin sa babaw ng sardinas, ibig sabihin nun, yun yung mga nasalt na talaga. Ngayon, isa sa karaniwang nagiging problema dito is, medyo uh, nagtitipid yung ating mga processors. So, paulit-ulit na ginagamit. From a food safety point of view, hindi po ito maganda. However, makikita po natin, ito yung tinatawag natin indigenous knowledge na medyo mahirap mahirap mahi, merong pwede nating pwede nating uh, explain ng science kasi po habang nilalagay mo siya doon sa salt meron pong mga lumalabas na mga uh, soluble proteins na posibleng maka ipun soluble proteins but could be some peptides there that could enhance the flavor of the batch test of sardines na ilalagay doon. Kaya ang sabi nila, sumasarap pag gano'n ang ginagawa. Pero from food safety point of view, medyo dapat po yata iwasan yon. 
That's another thing. Another thing ko, meron tayong tinatawag na ano, sa Ilonggo, it's called kampil. Kampil ba yun? Yun pong ano, drying tray. Okay. Ngayon po ang ginagamit nila, bambu. Ngayon, dahil maraming nagda-dry, okay, maraming nagda-dry sa mga coastal communities, kailangan nilang lagyan ng code ang kanilang bambu. Ang ginagawa po nila, nilalagyan nila ng pintura o red yung sa akin, yung sa kabilang kap yung kapitbahay ko, yellow. Eh, nag, ah, ano po yun, habang tumatagal, nag-chip off. So, sumasama yun doon sa sardinas. And again, from the food quality and safety point of view, hindi po dapat na maging practition. Okay. Meron din po tayo na po nakikita na kung saan-saan lang nagda-dry. Okay. Kung saan-saan lang nagda-dry. Uh, in general po, we always recommend ang drying dapat medyo mataas, mga 1 meter. Uh, more than 1 meter po yung taas. 1 to 2 meter. 1 to 1 and a half meters yung taas ng drying tray para po may air circulation. Yung pong iba ang ginagawa, nagda-dry sila sa mga basketball court at kung saan-saan. Tapos, uh, ang daming nadudubihan, nadudubihan yung ating sardinas. Uh, hindi po magandang practice shot. Kung baga, dumadami po yung uh, alikabok, uh, sand, at kung ano-ano pang maruming bagay, kaya pupunta doon sa sardinas during the drying. That's why, hindi man po natin future proof or yung magawa tayo ng climate smart technologies through the use of different drying facilities, pero po kailangan niya itang introduce to sa mga coastal communities. Uh, the UP Visayas Institute of Fish Processing Technology had a project funded by the uh, Commission on Higher Education we introduced the 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 dry the dryer that we mentioned earlier to the different uh, provinces in the in the in the in at least in region six through the fish to through the fisheries provincial institutes of fisheries uh, in the different provinces. Nagtrain po nagtrain po ng trainers on how to use this uh, on how to come up with the dryers and how to process dry dried fish uh, in a much better way. So yun po yung sa drying ng mga good practices and best practices. Ang smoking po is another thing. May area po tayo sa Pilipinas na yung smoking hindi po siya ilang minuto lang, mga 10 minutes, 15 minutes lang para lang umamoy na amoy usok yung isda. Tapos po may areas po na may ini-sprayan lang nila ng food color para magkaroon ng golden uh, golden brown color yung smoke fish. Yun po ay hindi magandang uh, practice na sana ay iwa iwasan kasi po yung smoking or the uh, at yung deposition ng smoke constituents po kailangan ng isda para lang hindi lang para sa kulay kundi para na rin po sa flavor at sa pag-extend ng shelf life ng sardinas. Pag, pag nilag, ang, ang malaking problema nito, yung food color pag in-spray, baka hindi pa food grade yung food color. Alam nyo yun, parang para lang magkaroon siya ng golden uh, brown color, in-spray yun nila, tapos hindi pa pala food grade, which is actually bad. Meron din po in other areas na para maiwasan ang uh, halimbawa po, nasa crate yung mga dried fish para maiwasan yung mga insekto, langgam, etc. Ini-spray yan nila ng insecticide yung gilid. Nako, ma mahirap po yan. Pero ginagawa po ito no, ibang, sa ibang areas. Kaya we have to be very careful on this. At isa lang pong ano, isa lang ano, isang warning lang po. Kung halimbawa po, meron tayong smoke fish or may dried fish, tapos vinacuum pack, Okay, pag vinak yung pack po, prior to marketing, meron pong gumagawa ng ganun. Pag po ang isang food product, hindi lang po fish, any food product na vinak yung pack, ang kasunod po nito, dapat yung product na yun must be stored at cold or chilled condition. Hindi po siya pwede sa room temperature. Kasi po, iniba natin yung environment sa loob ng package anaerobic na po siya, wala na siyang air. 
Therefore, meron ho tayong anaerobic organism na ayaw nating tumubo doon, tumutubo po siya pag uh, room temperature. So para maiwasan yon pag ang baba po yung binibili natin, hot dog, ano siya, uh, ato, uh, vacuum pa, dapat po ilagay talaga yun sa cold storage or sa ano, chilled storage or any other product. Hindi lang po ito fish, hindi lang sardina. Yun po. May tanong po yata dito nakita ko about yung ano yun? Nagko-cover ba to ng commercial and municipal? Opo. Nag-cover po kami ng mga com commercial, uh, nag-interview po ng both commercial and municipal fishers. Ayan. Salamat po, Dr. Uh, Mimi, kasi you really elaborated on uh, the practices. In fact, you've pinpointed po, eh, no? kasi kadalasan, ito talaga yung nakikita natin. Tapos, uh, more than that, uh, making uh, our processors and our fisher folk then realize na safety is something na kailangan natin i-prioritize para sa ating mga consumer. Maraming maraming salamat doon uh, para, para po sa inyong uh, pagsagot po. Another question is, a while ago, ma'am, you made mention of climate smart post technologies. Ang tanong daw po dito ay, uh, ito po ba ay kayang or possibly daw po ba itong uh, i-modify? Kumbaga, maliban sa mga facility na pwede pong i-access ng ating mga processors, kaya daw po at paano daw po ito i-modify ng mga ordinary or medyo mga small-scale processors? Ma'am. I-modify ang process or ang technology? Yung technology, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, uh, meron tayo tayo tayong ano, retrofitting of technologies in different coastal communities. Yung retrofitting po is uh, kung merong mga technologies na nag-work na, tapos halimbawa, uh, kailangan, kailangan halimbawa sa drying, halimbawa, ay, ay, halimbawa kailangan natin sa drying, tapos laging umuulan, yung ganyan, retrofit natin siya such that uh, during that uh, during those times medyo kailangan natin siyang uh, ma, ma transform into something na posibleng maka-dry ulit maka-dry halimbawa po ito pwede natin lagyan siya ng source of heat para yung heat na yon ang maka-dry dun sa product sa loob ng cabinet for instance or uh, in some cases po, ayusin natin yung design ng ating uh, can, ano, yung ating uh, fish dryer such that hindi, at uh, ayusin natin yung time. Timing po kasi minsan uh, nagkakaproblema. Uh, yung time ng pagproproseso para maiwasan yung tinatawag natin case hardening sa dried fish. Ang case hardening po is tumitigas ng husto yung pal yung yung labas ng isda yung loob is malambot pa o hindi pa nadadry karaniwan po itong nakikita ko halimbawa nag-umpisa ka ng drying ng medyo mainit na mainit na ang sikat ng araw say 12 noon or 1 o'clock tapos bigla ang evaporation ng tubig galing do sa sa, ba sa ibabaw or dun sa gilid ng isda, mas mabilis na unahan niyang mag-dry habang yung water coming from the inside of the fish papalabas pa lang. So, natatrap yung water sa loob, hindi siya nadadry. Kaya ang tawag doon is case hardening. In cases like those, kailangan po da, na i- and based on practices and based on recommendations, dapat maaga pa lang umpisahan na yung drying para uh, continuously at uh, consistent yung paglabas ng tubig para madry yung isda. So medyo halimbawa mga alas 8, alas 9 ng umaga, yung hindi pa masyadong mataas yung sikat ng araw, doon natin iumpisahan yung drying. Okay? Ngayon, uh, kung meron tayong mga drying facilities, Dapat isipin din natin na yung pagda-dry, hindi agad-agad na mataas yung temperatura ng dryer. Otherwise, pagpasok ng isda, posibleng magkaroon ng case hardening ng isda. So yung mga ganun, pwede po yung itweet, depende po kung ano yung teknolohiya at depende kung ano yung 
yung practice dun sa lugar para ma, ma para magkaroon ng ano ng mga maging climate smart yung mga technologies natin and thank you po ma'am thank you and uh, siguro diyan din papasok ano yung mga agencies spe uh, specifically yung mga uh, government uh, offices di ba mga organizations na pwede pong makatulong sa ating mga mind is that when it comes to uh, climate smart post technologies the next question ma'am is uh, may we know po the status of uh, the sardine industry sa philippines on uh, about implementation or adhering to the international food safety standards and uh, obtaining certifications okay <laughs> At this point po, nakakapasok naman in other countries yung ating sardines. Nagkaroon lang tayo ng problema. Nung before pandemic to, nagkaroon tayo ng problema ng rejection ng Philippine sard uh, bottled sardines to the, to the EU. Kasi may mga processors na diniclare na yung sardine species natin, yung sardine species na ginamit nila, is Sardinella lemuru, which is actually based on the study in NFRDI saying that the Sardinella longiceps that we have in the Philippines is actually Sardinella lemuru. Okay, nagka-problema yan sa, sa international market kasi wala sa listahan, sa codex at sa FAO na meron species ng sardines sa Pilipinas na Sardinella lemuru. Meron tayo longiceps. Pero our studies, especially the DNA study and that was published by NFRBI in a doc moji saying that we have lemuro and not longiceps. So nagkaroon ng problema, uh, the subcommittee on fish and fishery products of CODEX in the Philippines in our group uh, petitioned to CODEX the change. We did not uh, touch on the longiceps. Let longiceps stay, but we would like to add Sardinella limuru in the list of sardines sa country from the Philippines. Uh, it was in 2020, I think 2021, 2022, when we had, when we attended this online uh, codex session and as member of the, uh, you know, as part of the Philippine representative Philippine group uh, headed by uh, Yusek Chin at the time and of course the chair of the subcommittee si Doc Yuli ng NFRDI we presented our petition and then after that uh, we had to come up with an E electronic TWG talking about all these things and we also had to come up with some uh, documentation regarding the the uh, status of the Philippine sardine industry. Baka kasi daw pag yung limuro pag ginamit is uh, ma-exploit yung resource, yung mga ganon. Plus, we had to subject our uh, sardinella limuro to sensory evaluation in at least four sensory evaluation laboratories uh, in Europe. So, meron tayo isa, I think, Italy, the other one is in Portugal. The other one, I think, one sensory laboratory. In, I can't remember the other two. Pero apat yon na nag-gawa-gawa ng sensory evaluation para ma-prove na limuru is a different species. So, ang nangyari nun, at until such time na hindi pa naaayos yun, hindi tayo pwedeng magpasok Pwede tayo magpasok ng sardinas but we cannot uh, declare them as sardinella lemuru but sardinella. Ta pero pero pag longiceps o pimbriyata ang ipinasok pwede. So, so far ngayon, yun yung problema pero as far as the others, other sardines are concerned, other products are concerned, nag -e export naman tayo. That in good, good, in good quantity. Ang pinakamalaki natin would be the bottled and the canned. Pero yung canned sardines natin, mostly, just like bangus, ang target are basically those Filipinos who are living in other countries. Yes, yes, kasi 
grabe ang kompetensya. In fact, when we were talking about this Lemuro in, 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 in Codex, it would appear na yung mga nagre-reklamo or yung mga nag nag ano nagko-question sa Philippine sa Philippine petition are those who are trade uh, rivals of the Philippines in the EU market. So sila yung nagko-question at sila yung medyo alam mo yun, yung during the discussion sila yung pumipiga do sa Pilipinas. Pero other countries at uh, the big ones like Australia, Philipp uh, US, Japan na nando sa codex at that time, even France, they're supporting the Philippines. Pero yung mga other exporting countries, kinu-question. At, and it would appear na yung, sila yung ating, ano, yung mga kompetensya. Maraming kompetensya kasi. And if we don't add value or if we don't do, you know, good quality uh, sardines, we cannot compete in the international market. Hope I answered the question, guys. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you po. Siguro translating that to a positive note, ano? Uh, may, ano, uh, internationally competitive ang ating mga produkto. Kaya nga, <laughs> di ba? They, they are actually looking for something na. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, may that be an encouragement po, no, sa ating mga processors, sa ating po mga feature folk. Second to the last question natin, ma'am, eh, ang kagandahan po kasi na ating seminar, eh, we cater din po yung mga researchers. In fact, may, meron din po tayo mga uh, leaders din po na makakapanood na ating seminar. So the question is, what government interventions do you recommend to ensure a sustainable high-value sardines in the Philippines? And then, what word of encouragement, ma'am, ang pwede po natin iwan sa ating pong mga co-researcher para ipagpatuloy yung mga areas na pwede pong mag-grow over time when it comes to uh, to enhancing the value of Philippine sardines po? Okay. Government agencies, I think it's actually a partnership uh, uh, of the different government agencies. Uh, in, in, in value chain lingo, we call them the enablers of the Philippine sardine industry. Of course, we should all be, you know, we should all be headed or we should all be directed by the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. Meron po tayong mga different FMAs. Meron tayong mga management uh, management uh, committees or management group of the different FMAs who should be who would be helping us in doing so. Uh, in terms po ng mga science or mga science uh, based uh, information, bawat FMA ay merong science advisory group that is actually providing or helping the management of the FMA uh, by providing by by, by uh, collating and providing science-based information so that we could come up with policies that are science-based in the different FMAs in the country. So yun po ngayon yung pinaka may na ginagawa ng, uh, sa BIFAR. At, uh, and we hope, to, it's, it's been working well and we hope that we would continue this the different FMAs. Uh, I would like to, to, to comment actually uh, ang nangunguna sa mga different, sa different FMAs all over the country, although dahil FMA po, nasa FMA 11 ang, ang UP Visayas, pero sa totoo lang po, ang pinaka medyo advanced na in terms of, you know, uh, activities ng different FMAs in the country is FMA 11, which is the, which consists of uh, the, Visayan, the Visayan si po ito at ang regional offices ng BIFAR ay region 5, 6, and 7. So yun po, in terms of other government agencies, we could actually have, we should be partnering with DTI, especially po sa marketing and, and, and exportation of our resources. Uh, in terms po ng standards, in addition to DA, Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standards, uh, tinutulungan din po tayo ng uh, DOH in terms of the standards for processed products. So yun pong non yun pong ano um, chilled, fro chilled frozen sa ano po yan sa BAPS po yan Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standard ng DA para po pag na-process na ang standards po kasi para mapanatili yung value kailangan natin ng national standards. So nandoon po tayo meron po ang DOH na stand ng uh, for the process uh, sardine products. So with uh, kailangan din po ng tulong ng 
BA, PFDA, kasi ang PFDA, Philippine Fisheries Development Authority, kasi po sila yung nag-handle ng mga different uh, fishing ports, fish ports, yun yung regional fish ports are under the management of PFDA. Yung municipal fish ports po ay kinoconstruct ng PFDA, tapos binibigay sa mga local government units. Ay yung mga CFLCs or the Community Fish Landing Centers, kinoconstruct ng before and eventually after construction, once it's functional, binibigay na rin po sa LGUs. And of course, our partners po sa LGUs na kung na para mapanatili yung para masustain yung uh, paggawa natin ng, uh, and, ng product with enhanced value, kailangan po natin ng tulong ng mga LGU. Which is now being, you know, mas mal malakas ngayon kasi uh, financially. <laughs> ano nga ito? Yeah. Ang, 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 ang mga LGUs because of the uh, Mandanas ruling. Pero uh, we need to provide LGUs, especially those people from government agencies, uh, development agencies, more specifically, uh, higher education institu institutions, mga SUCs and research institutions to help LGUs reach our fishers, our processors, our traders para ma-maintain yung uh, proper handling and processing of different sardine products. Only through that we could enhance the value it might necessarily be, you know, coming up with new products or new, new value-added products. We could just stick with our existing products, but finding the niche of those products through proper packaging and, uh, you know, positioning them in the market would be would be better off. Yeah, and thank you po. Maraming maraming salamat, ma'am. In fact, uh, you really underscored na it's really a call for uh, collaboration with yes. the assurance with the assurance po na may good source tayo ng ganitong uri ng isda sa Pilipinas and uh, with the assurance as well na tayo ay soon enough magiging internationally competitive I guess uh, we have motivated not just the researchers but uh, more importantly yung ating pong mga minds na Jello, sandali, may nakalimutan ako Sige po ma'am, go ahead po. Yung NGOs natin, I should also have pointed out earlier, marami kasing NGOs na tumutulong. In particular, yung halimbawa, uh, fish right, the USAID fish right is actually helping us a lot. Uh, Rare Philippines is also helping us a lot in all the activities natin, especially sa mga, sa mga coastal communities. Oceana is also help, helping. Parang ang dami po yun. At dun sa ano, yung nakalimutan ko rin sabihin, specific agency under the DOH is the food, the FDA or Food and Development Authority. Pinramp ako ni Jun Jun. Hi, Jun Jun. Pinramp ako. That is actually one of those, you know, one of those agencies that are actually helping us. Pag-process yun. Yes. And of course, the research agencies that we have in the country, specifically NFRDI. I would, I'm tempted to say SafeLeck, but SafeLeck is not working on sardines. But uh, malay natin, eventually, baka ang SafeLeck mag-aral na rin ng culture ng sardines because they've started working on galunggo. So they might want to work on sardines later on, but I don't know, it might be in, you know, in the future, but not in the near future. Yan lang. Okay po, salamat, maraming maraming salamat, Dr. Mimi, once again. Uh, salamat po dahil talagang uh, nakaka-motivate ano natutulungan po nating ma-uplift yung especially ating mga mainista na marami pa pong ma maraming potential ano ang uh, mainista at maraming may, may pera may kita definitely at uh, yun din po sa inyong uh, uh, panawagan ano to collaborate more kasi we've been collaborating naman to all the partner agencies no? together if we do collective efforts, ay matutulungan natin yung ating mga future talk. Maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Mimi, for sharing your expertise, knowledge, and your passion with us. Maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng ating participants sa Cisco WebEx. Pwede nyo pong uh, i-fill out yung uh, feedback form until 12 para makatanggap po ng certificate. Ganun din po, maraming salamat sa lahat ng ating viewers sa FB. Pwede nyo pong panoorin ng video even na uh, after the seminar ended, we'll, you'll just be redirected to your YouTube page. Tapos, uh, 
Lagi po nating subaybayan every month yung ating pong webinar. Iba-iba pong commodities, iba-ibang technologies yung ating uh, tinatalakay. All for the goal na matulungan ng ating mga inisda at magsasaka. Muli maraming maraming salamat Dr. Mimi. Pagpalain po kayo. Thank you so much. Maraming Sa salamat. Mga... Uh -huh. okay. Opo. Sa ating participants and viewers, please follow our FB page. That's DA Bar, Bureau of Agricultural Research. We also have our Instagram account. That's uh, the Bar official, and you can also visit our page. That's bar.gov.ph. So this has been your host, Jello. Maraming maraming salamat po na waay marami tayong natutunan at uh, yung mga natutunan po natin ay ma ma practice po natin at uh, tayo ay makinabang at ma-improve ang ating mga pamumuhay. Maraming maraming salamat and have a blessed day ahead. Thank you, Dr. Mimi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Well.